Hi, I'm Mitch Sperling. I'm the Editorial Director of Low Power Engineering. I'm here with Vic Kokarni from Apache Design, Mike Meyer from Cadence, Sean McLeod from Calypto, Brett Klein from Forte Design Systems, and Grant Martin from Tensilica. So Vic, is high-level synthesis enough for power estimation? The two worlds have really never gone together before. In my mind, the high-level synthesis really applies to power optimization as opposed to power estimation. The flow which uh, we believe is emerging now as we talk to several customers is really high-level optimization because you can do a lot of what-if analysis with respect to hardware, software, you know, co-simulation, co-analysis. Then also look at DVFS, uh, clock gating techniques, various uh, scheduling of events, transaction level models and such. So what happens though after that, once you do it, which is really important, I think uh, we have to go towards that zone of uh, HLS, but then you have to validate what you just did in your design against a RTL level analysis tool for power. The reason is simple, because at RT level, you can pretty much capture quite a few physical effects, uh, what happens downstream from the decisions which you made at the high level synthesis. So RTL becomes a linchpin, as it were, between the HLS world and the power integrity world, which is power grid design, package decisions, looking at uh, heat, thermal issues, that is, uh, electromigration, what happens to LDIDT type effects, uh, in terms of switching currents and so on. So all those things have to be tied together in what now we call as a chip, uh, chip package system convergence. So Grant, we haven't really seen the uh, fusion of power with HLS in the past. What is, what's going to change as a result of this and what's driving it? I think the drive to power and the drive to high level synthesis, whether you take uh, the conventional synthesis approach or look at configurable processors, which is a kind of high-level synthesis, is driven a lot by um, the need to save energy on wireless and portable applications, where energy is everything, and minimizing power consumption and uh, developing and offering efficient power consumption so you get the maximum amount of computation done for every joule of energy you use is the key driver. But is it, should it be done at the high level or typically it's been done at, at the RTL level in the past? By the time you get to RTL level or even worse gate level, a lot of the major decisions that have the most impact on your energy consumption have already been made. The right place to make those kind of trade-offs is at the high level, especially when you look at software hardware partitioning and at instruction set architecture optimization. Do you think it's going to drive much more interest in HLS as a result of this? HLS has been around for 15 years. Yeah, but I think HLS has gone through various evolutions, and I think it's one more tool in the toolkit for designers that really will allow them to explore the design space and in the power and energy space much more effectively and much more rapidly than just applying standard RTL method. So, Mike, we, when we look at high-level synthesis, we typically don't include power. What is driving that, and how will that change HLS? For high-level synthesis, that people are really looking for a complete solution. It's not just a matter of hitting the clock rate and area. People need power. You know, there's a power budget, and they want to do, you know, first starting with exploration. They want to be able to explore different microarchitectures, decide whether this this is something that's commercially feasible, and then you know how to optimize it once they once they've decided that they're going to implement something in hardware. Is it going to change the way that the um the tools are used and the appeal of them as well, or is it just going to be, this is just one more function that we've added in? So, so using high-level synthesis and considering power, um, it, it's going to be important to go actually consider the, the real use cases, which is something that uh, oftentimes at the block gap level um, has, been, has been ignored. It's hard to get good vectors. Uh, you start off and focus very much on the block level without system level vectors. Um, at the high level synthesis, you can you can you have a high level model that's been plugged into oftentimes a larger system. So you're able to go consider uh, real power numbers early on with accurate 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 vectors. And I think, so I think that makes it much more practical to consider power during your early design. 
Cadence has been very focused on the software side of things well, which also can have a big impact on power. Will, will that fit into the HLS world as well? I, I think that you're going to see a, a convergence over time with both uh, virtual prototypes um, using TLM and high-level synthesis using TLM. And there may be a re refinement process that's necessary to take the very fast uh, TLM model that's used for virtual prototypes and take that down to something that's synthesizable. But I think that, that um, uh, end goal is very attractive because that leads to one model that can be used throughout the, li the, the uh, design project. So, Sean, high-level synthesis and really understanding power and being able to, to explore it have never really gone together before. How is that going to change now, and what will that mean for HOS? Well, I think that it has a lot to do with that we're reaching a technology inflection point. So at 45 nanometers or below, um, I think not only battery life is becoming critical, but really uh, power integrity, uh, thermal integrity. And so therefore, the need to be able to reduce the power is, is absolutely paramount um, at these uh, lower technology nodes. Um, and high-level synthesis is, is perfect uh, for being able to uh, help reduce the power. Uh, techniques around uh, arch architectural exploration have been around for a while, but new uh, technology that's being added into high-level synthesis around uh, basically memory gating, memory gating that typically amounts to about 60% of your power. Uh, you can do optimizations around that. Clock gating, uh, combinational sequential clock gating, and then starting to look at some basically power management, uh, some voltage and frequency scaling. These are all techniques that are very perfect uh, for HLS and can be incorporated into the algorithm automatically. So I think this is a, a really a huge opportunity in an area where it's probably going to help drive the adoption of HLS. And power is one of those things that just adds to the complexity, right? It adds another dimension, for sure. Um, we've got, uh, you know, area and performance has is, is been historically the two sort of, you know, uh, dimensions that people have looked at uh, when targeting hardware. But uh, at the end of the day, people are also very interested in, in power. So yes, it does, add, it does add another dimension. And probably what needs to happen here is, is very good uh, uh, accuracy in terms of your power while you're uh, running HLS. So in other words, uh, uh, you need to have uh, sort of vector-driven power estimation inside of HLS so that you can make uh, reasonable trade-offs um, uh, when you're actually optimizing your design. So, Brett, we're starting to add in power analysis into high-level synthesis. What's driving that? How does that change high-level synthesis as well? So power has always been an important part of high-level synthesis and started off in the early days of implementing simple things like the Stark rules. Stark is a standards body in Japan that has certain rules about coding styles for RTL. And so you could implement these rules and get better power out of your RTL than you would if you just simply wrote RTL in some random fashion. And so as you look forward, there's ways to extend that. So maybe you'd extend it by uh, implementing a, an adder. And an adder might have certain characteristics for speed and for area. Well, you may also now take into account uh, the power utilization of that adder underneath some sort of realistic stimulus. Same with the multiplier or any of the other functional units. So what we've done in Synthesizer is given the tool the ability to actually start to analyze power and make decisions as it writes out the RTL. And as we go down the path into newer versions, we'll also implement uh, more aggressive optimizations that can happen uh, and allow the designer to really focus on first meeting uh, their timing because that's critical to any uh, synthesis product, and then being able to trade off area and um, power based on whatever their design constraints are. So I think inside you've always had some amount of power, and as you go forward you'll see more and more uh, analysis come in, which is basically the tool's way of making trade-offs or allowing the designer to make quick trade-offs to ultimately achieve their goal, which is a faster time to the correct quality of results. Those kind of trade-offs have never been there before though, right? I mean, we've always had um are you going to use this part and what's the performance? Power has sort of been a secondary consideration in a lot of this stuff and often, often an afterthought. I think that's true. I think you can implement power afterwards and some of the high-level synthesis tools do that by trying to implement clock gating, let's say, at the tail end of their process and you know, hoping for a big wow. And that's not what we've done. We've, um, we, what we've done is tried to focus on getting the best results and then if tools down the stream, like power compiler or something else, implement clock gating, we'll let them go off and do it. But uh, you're absolutely right. It's probably the last two years that you've seen the more, at least in our, in our world, you've seen the more uh, power analysis and power aware synthesis come into play. I think there were companies like Chip Vision that went out there and said, we're going to do everything based on power. 
And that absolutely is not the correct way because you still need to first meet your timing goal and then afterwards you need, need to meet some area goal. Otherwise you can't produce a chip at you know, the right economic you know, value. And if you can't do that, then the power part doesn't matter anyway. So first meet timing, then go and uh, uh, get, your, get your area right and then go get your power right after that.